Hi, this is Professor Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at the Fast Institute of Technology with uh, another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial will actually be dealing with bringing 2D line work in from Rhino uh, and working with it in Painter. Okay, so uh, I'm going to open the Rhino file from our class assignment. right here. When you bring yours in, it'll likely look like this in perspective viewport. And as I mentioned, the maquettes are visible there on the surfacing 2 layer. Uh, when you're bringing information out of Rhino, 2D information, and you want to do so at an accurate scale, uh, you must do it from the orthographic top view. So. I can come over here and hit set view top, but the easiest way when you have a full screen like this is to control button with your thumb and then click on tab key and cycle your way through until you get what you want. I'm going to select all of that line work, I can do that with control A as well. And I'm going to export it to my desktop. as an Adobe Illustrator file, an AI file. It'll give me a couple of options here. The default tends to be this. Um, we don't want snapshot. We want to preserve model scale. And you want to make sure that one millimeter equals one millimeter. RGB because we're in a Windows environment. Leave these other options blank and hit OK. And that's gone. Now we're going to need to go to the desktop and open this file. Now, um, Illustrator is on all of the files, uh, all the computers at school, so you would just double click and it will open automatically. Of course, you, if you have Illustrator on your own computer, you can do that or you can open Illustrator first. side of Illustrator. Either way is fine. And you'll get something like this. It always throws the Rhino line work down into the lower left hand corner. I'm going to control A to select all again. I'm going to control G to group. I could also get group from the object menu. Grouping works just like it does in Rhino. It means that I can now click anywhere in my image there in my file and, and it'll all move together as one. The whole reason that we're bringing this into Illustrator is to give us control over the weight of the stroke. Uh, when you come in from Rhino, Rhino exports the file with a one point thickness stroke which is unusable. Uh, it's way too heavy. We're going to drop this to 0.35 or 0.33 I should say hit enter. You can see those lines are much more uh, acceptable. Leave it selected, don't click in the background, just leave it selected as it is and go to File Export. going to export it back to our desktop but not as a DWG file. We do not want that. We want JPEG which is right here. Export. Now you want the highest resolution and whatnot possible. The default that you'll have when you open the file will be this. This is average size file, screen resolution, and a hinted resu a hinted anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is what dictates how smooth and unpixelated your line is in the paint program. This is because Illustrator has come to set its defaults to suit um, web graphics. And we're not doing web graphics. We want top quality publishing graphics. So we're going to take this all the way 
to the larger file 10. We're going to set it all the way to 300 ppi. We're going to set the anti-aliasing all the way up. Art optimized super sampling. Then we'll hit OK. If you use a program other than Illustrator to do this, for example, you could use Macromedia Freehand. You could use Corel Draw. You know, there are other vector-based graphics programs that will do the same thing. Or, if you have an old copy of Illustrator where things don't look quite the same, it's the same principle. Make sure you set the stroke weight down and make sure you export at the highest quality JPEG image you can. Okay? So, now I'm going to go into Painter. Rearrange my palettes a little bit. I move between work and home and between this temp the monitor and I have a Cintiq tablet here at home. So everything has a different shape, so every time I open Painter I have to sort things out a little. I'm going to go to my desktop. Find my JPEG image. template JPEG and bring it in. Okay. Now, just so I can take the opportunity to teach you something I didn't teach you in class, I'm just going to leave that there for now. The other file we have to bring in is, um, or I should say, um, are the uh, reference templates. So, I'm going to bring those in. Now, in your case, you'll be bring, dropping them from our website onto your desktop and bringing them from there. I can grab mine straight off my computer, which is what I'm going to do. Because I don't believe they're on my desktop here at all. No, they're not. Um, so, I'll go to where they were actually made. In your case, you would just download these two pages from our website, but I'm going to bring them in from where they're located on my hard drive. I'm going to bring this one in, just leave it there. I'm going to bring the second one in, just leave it there. And the last thing I'm going to do right now is open a new canvas, the one we're going to actually work on. File, New. It's important that this be set to inches. Um, and that the file is 7.5 by 10 by 300 pixels per inch and hit OK. Okay, so now we have our canvas and we have three other canvases here. Now, it's really nice or not nice, depending on how you look at it, when you have things minimized so that they each have their own little window in, in, paint, in Painter, um, or I should say right here, so that each one of these files is its own window. I don't like to work this way. I find it very confusing. So I maximize these, and when you maximize one, you've maximized them all. The problem is, is how do you get to the other ones? And that's what I wanted to show you that I did not show you in class. You use um, Control Tab, and each time you hit Tab with your whole thumb holding down Control, you will cycle through the documents currently open in Painter. Okay, so I'm going to go to the first one, the template, Control A, or select All. Either will work. I'm going to Control X or cut. 
I'm going to control W to close the window, this file. I do not want to save my changes. So now that's floating on my clipboard. This is my canvas I want to work on. I know that because if I cycle through my canvases, control tab, it's the only blank one. It's the only blank one because I was careful to delete the last one uh, to send to close it. So control V. That pastes that in. I'll name it while it's here. I'll double click on its name in the layers box. Call it template. Going to cycle through to another image. Control tab. Here's the next one. Select all. Cut. Control X and close the window. Control W. No, I don't want to save changes. Now I know for certain I have the right canvas because it has my template sitting in the middle of it. So I'll Control V and paste this reference in. And I'll call it Ref1 for reference 1. Now I'm going to cycle through my images to get my next one. Now I only have two images left because I keep being careful to close each canvas when I'm done with it. So I only have two canvases left. This is the only one I don't have in my final image file, so this is the one I'm going to control A, control X to cut, control W to close. I'm not going to save the changes. And just here I have my two layers template, reference one, and now control V, and I'll name this layer reference two. I'm going to give myself one more layer, but I want that layer to be called drawing, because that's what I'm going to draw on, but where that layer is going to sit is going to be important to me. Remember in Painter that the order things sit is what's visible. I can't see the template because reference 2 is in front of it. I can't see the canvas because the template, reference 1, and reference 2 are in front of it. I can't see reference 1 because reference 2 is in front of it. There's reference one. There's template. There's canvas. Okay. By the way, I rarely work on the canvas. I only work on the canvas when I'm done, um, and I'm not going to want to do anything else. The canvas is safe zone. I, I usually don't do any work on the canvas. I'm always working on a layer. I want to draw between the template and reference one. So that's where I want to put my template, I mean my, sorry, my layer, my drawing layer. So in order to decide where the next new layer is going to go, click on another layer, and when you hit new layer, it'll put it right, right above that selected layer. So since I want it right here, I'm going to select template and hit new layer. And you'll see that that's where the new layer came in, came in right between template and reference one which is right where I wanted it. Double click, and I'll name that one Drawing. Okay, So now I have my file ready to work with. 